I'm not, I don't, I know you're going to say it's going to create jobs for here. And they're going to say well, all this stuff, how great it is to, 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 uh, to, to do this. But I have a fear that it's going to create some negative things for, for our area here. And, and I guess I'm not for it. I believe I'm not for it because look at Atlantic City. Look, look at the element that it brought into Atlantic City. I, I, don't, I don't think it really brings the right things yet. You know, they're going to promise us, they're going to tell us that we're going to have all these jobs, just like they did with all this abandoned property down, downtown. And if they were all these jobs to us, and what have we really got from it? So I think we have to be really, really careful with this. I think we have to, um, I guess maybe there has to be legislation that demands. And, 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 but we have to follow up and make sure that we have the jobs that they're saying. But then there's a byproduct of, 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 the, of being that comes with that, that negative part of that. And I don't know if I want that in, in, in my city, in, in the 31st district. I, I'm kind of right now leaning against it. Um, I guess I guess I'm right here in the 31st district. I think we have a perfect spot for it, and it's right, right, uh, right down the street there in Mayo Military Ocean Terminal, right on the waterfront, right on the waterfront. Perfect piece of land for hotels. Uh, we can add a ferry system, ferry people in from Manhattan. This will create jobs. It will create income. It will create readables for the area. It will create taxes that we can use to improve roads, after school programs for our children, and do a lot of the things that we need to do in this district. I'm 100% behind it because we have a perfect spot for it. Thank you. That's a good question. Well, let's talk about public safety. I support a Hudson County Police Academy so that more residents in the 31st district can apply to become a police officer so that we can have public safety streets for our children, for our, for our seniors, for homeless, for everyone in this community. So that's what I support. decisions. I think this is a personal liberty issue. Um, I, in terms of opportunities for gaming, there's a, a great place in Bayonne called Winners, which is right in the south end of Bayonne, that has a massive off-track betting facility. There's no reason why we should be implementing uh, more lean permitting and, and fast permitting that would allow places like that, should they want to, to go and pull out, out gambling. But I'm, I'm definitely against this concept of having government bureaucrats and cronies deciding where casinos should be. Because issuing something like five casino licenses, which is what the Christie administration does, just begs for cronyism, begs for backdoor deals, begs for, for corrupt payments, and that's what we're going to be getting more of the dirty. So what we need to do is change the, the regulatory regime so that if a business owner wants to allow gaming in their facility, they should be allowed to do so. Because you know what we don't do? We don't say you're not allowed to play the lottery. And that's a gambling, right? So, uh, secondly, um, you know, I, I think that we, we should, we should a absolutely you know, encourage development down the MOT. Um, I'm not sure if gaming is going to be the long-term solution. I think what we should actually do there is have a fully open and transparent system so everyone can propose that and see if they want gaming or residential development or a waterfront marine or something like that. But in terms of gaming, I think we need a streamlined regulatory system. We need business owners who are allowed to make the decision for themselves. And we have more than enough opportunities, and there's clearly as to do with the lottery system, more than enough demand of our citizens to engage in games of chance. So that shouldn't be something that bureaucrats decide for people to make a decision for people. Thank you. I'm not totally against it. I am open to the idea. I uh, I would like gaming possibly away from the inner city. If you're going to give us a, uh, its own turnpike entrance, so we won't have the traffic nightmare that we already have in Jersey City. Uh, if you're going to give us the jobs and we we make sure we verify who's working and who's not, if we're taking care of the, the employment there, and it's going to reduce the taxes. People in uh, in Rutherford, for example, the taxes may be a, little, a lot lower because of the, the metal lands and issues like that. So I would support it if, it's, if, if it comes with those contingencies. If they're going to let us run it, if, they, if they're going to have a turnpike entrance, and if it's going to reduce taxes. I'm going to decide. It's a broken kind of issue. 
they say it will provide jobs, but I wonder if we should support something that seems like it's already been built. Do we, has the open bidding process really started already with backroom deals? When I see Reebok, the founder of Reebok World of Liberty National come out with already a billion dollar project that he wants to already implement it in Liberty Park and he happens to be one of the biggest supporters of the full administration, that makes, me, that makes me step back and wonder, is this just a shame? Is it already something that's already in the works? Let's, let's, let's also look at the other one. Atlantic City Gaming is dying. You see what's happening in Delaware, you see what's happening in Pennsylvania, you see what's happening in New York. So do you, do you take the opportunity of, of, save, of saving the gaming system that basically Nevada and New Jersey birthed and move it to other parts of the city to see if you basically can roadblock our gaming, our gaming revenue going out of state? So I'm going to decide. But what I will do is say this. Do not believe that it's going to lower our property taxes. That money is going to go to something else. Do not believe that it's going to provide us better roads. The money is going to go somewhere else. Do not believe that they're going to come up in the southern part of this city and employ young men between 20 and 24 that have the highest, have a 54% unemployment rate in this district to work in that casino. So you can be fooled if you want, but I'm going to decide. not one that uh, we've discussed uh, thus far in this campaign. I was for the gaming industry in the 31st district, but I think it has to be winning. And I actually think the government has a role to play to guarantee transparency. Quite frankly, we can't guarantee that transparency across the entire process. I think the gaming industry in the 31st legislative district has an opportunity to create you know, high paying union jobs, which are always needed. But I also think this is the exact sort of project that you need to mandate minority hiring and local hiring to make sure that it benefits the local community. Now, I agree with Bruce, though, that there is always a danger that the, the, bank, the revenue from this sort of project be siphoned off and not dedicated. Everyone in New Jersey knows that Atlantic City revenues will be dedicated you know, to the community and to the lottery will be dedicated to education, and it has not been. Okay, so part of what we need to do if we're going to move forward with this is to make sure that we make an iron flag of where the revenue is going to go. The last thing I would say is that I would, not be open, I would not support an open process because anyone who lives in Hudson County sees that lottery machines pop up in every storefront these days. It's almost like they're targeting the urban population. If you walk down West Side Avenue, you can't go more than three storefronts without seeing a big lottery machine. Okay? And I think we have to protect ourselves and our community against that sort of target. And finally, I am very concerned about any sort of economic development in Liberty State Park that changes that gym. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of talk about minimum wage. What what I'm in favor of is a living wage. Minimum wage is intended not for uh, you and me to raise our families on. Minimum wage is intended for high school kids, part-time workers, summer jobs. That's what minimum wage is, is, is intended for. I'm in favor of a living wage. And what we need to do is we need to determine what the cost of living is here in, the, in Northern Jersey. And we need to mandate that, that jobs are paying that living wage. We need, we need, we need wages that Men and women can raise their families on. They can send their their kids to schools. Um, that's that's what I'm in favor of. I'm in favor of a a living wage, not a minimum wage. And that living wage, I, I can't give you the answer. Any answer I'm going to give you right now is just going to be an arbitrary answer. I could say we could say it's going to be a million dollars an hour. That's not going to make anything better. Right? Washington, I agree with you. We need a living wage. And we have to do the research, the proper research, to find out the cost of living before we can spread out a number. So I believe in a living wage. I, I think we need to thank Law and Art before we take legislative action on mandating wages or setting prices in general. Because just in terms of the way the economy works generally, 
you raise the minimum wage, some people are going to make a little bit more, that's true. But also, you know what else is going to happen? Some people are going to make nothing at all. Because it's basic supply and demand. If you raise the price of something, people demand less of it. So it, it, it's a nice talking point, but you're going to have some people have, have better incomes, which is good for them, but you're also going to have some people get fired. And you know who gets fired? The most vulnerable. Right? The people who are non great workers, the people who are all right, tough to make ends meet, those are the people who are going to get fired. Okay? So secondly, I think we need to, we need to, to be very careful about how we, how we mandate and legislate prices in a lean economy. Because I don't know if anyone saw the news today, but we had a contraction in the last quarter of this economy. And if that happens again this quarter, we're in a recession again. So all this hard work that President Obama and everyone's been doing since 2008 to get this economy back on the right track is going to be squandered if we don't make sure we focus on job growth and sensible policies. Because what we keep on doing is layering regulation after regulation upon business owners, and it hurts small business the worst. Because we layer, you know, how well-intentioned the ACA is, it's harder to hire people now. And every, everyone will tell you, it's harder to hire people now. People are playing games where they hire people for 39 hours instead of 40 hours. And all this type of stuff is just going it, it, to, it's, it's a nice talking point, but unfortunately I'm telling you, you cannot legislate economic growth and you cannot legislate job growth into existence. What I would like to do, though, is make sure we keep strong relationships with our community partners and employers to make sure that they do do the right thing and make sure that, that they pay their employees fairly. And because of a lot of great activism of people who are concerned about this issue, which is an important issue, large employers like Walmart and others are raising the wage, and we need more of that, but I just don't think we need to legislate into existence. Thank you. I, I strongly believe we should raise the uh, minimum wage. And uh, because the, uh, the, if you go and you say, uh, let's, let's just do a living wage, uh, like suggested here, Everyone has a different lifestyle, so you know different lifestyles and, and different wages. So we, we need to raise the, the minimum wage. We need to let people know what they're going to get when they're out there working. We need to we need them to to join unions and to be a part of a union, and we need to fight so our unions can be strong and stable. And we need to continue to to help the working class. We're here for the working class. We're here for for the average person who needs to, to make some money to raise their family. You say a uh, living wage, you, you don't know what the living wage for me it might be different than it is for you. So let's raise this minimum wage. I'm, I'm hoping we do. We go up to what's been mentioned to $15 an hour. I, I can put a number on it because uh, I think you know we need to at least try to double what people make now. It's, uh, it's just not enough. And when you live in, here in, in this part of the country, you need more money. So let's raise this minimum wage. Yes, as far as the minimum wage, um, it's something when you use the word minimum, it makes you think of minimum. And people who often obtain, that, that, have, that, that get the minimum wage, really sometimes are looked at as they do the minimum work. Okay, and sometimes they do the most hardest work. But I think this is the thing that we need to sit down as legislators and tell our governor that this is something that possibly he needs to take up with the Governor's Association. And the reason why I say that is this. We need to regionalize, regionalize this problem. We need to get a northeast, not a north Jersey, but a northeast minimum or living wage. Now, what's surprising is this, is that some opponents up here are speaking out that they're here to protect the middle class. But if you think of the middle class in New Jersey right now, right, due to the cost of living, Middle class is probably making about two hundred thousand dollars a year combined income. I don't think there's too many people in this room making two hundred thousand dollars a year. So they don't want to go down the train right now and protect the wrong people. Okay. Now, if you really want to do it, let's sit down with the governors of other states and make this a regionalized issue, and sit down and look at the cost of living and see what, what we can make it. You're allowed across some states. That's what I think we need to do. But we do need to increase it. Increase, change the minimum wage into a living wage. Thank you. Too often, when we talk about minimum wage, we try to characterize these employees as young kids working at McDonald's. But that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is if you go into any of those glass towers on the waterfront, that security guard is probably making minimum wage and trying to raise a family. The maintenance staff is probably a member of SEIU 32BJ and making minimum wage. I'm very proud to have the endorsement of 32BJ. I'm also very proud to support their campaign for a $15 an hour minimum wage. This is about setting priorities. I talked about this in the last campaign. This is about 
we need to establish our priorities. And part of our priority needs to recognize that there are hardworking people with two parents and a family trying to raise multiple children, working on minimum wage, and it's not just one job, it's not just two jobs, it's three, four jobs in a household. How do we expect our community to grow? How do we expect these students to excel in school if we don't, as government officials, as leaders, attempt to provide them the resources? And the least we can do, I think, is a minimum wage set of $15 an hour. Thank you. You know, people work 40 hours, probably even more a week, probably making the minimum wage, and unfortunately, they still have to depend on government assistance. That's a shame. Without a doubt, we need a fair minimum wage. And I believe it's close to $15 an hour. Um, think, when, think about if they're making $15 an hour or a fair, the money will go back into the economy. It'll stimulate the economy. There'll be more money coming in. So it is very important that we have a fair uh, minimum wage. Again, it's a shame make it work in 40 hours and still depending on government assistance. So if you have that $15 or whatever fair minimum wage, then we would come off government assistance. So we would be saving money from the government. So I think that we do need uh, a fair minimum wage and I believe $15 an hour would be right. You know, I am a union representative and I am proud of being a union representative and ask me one of the largest unions in the United States in America has endorsed me. And I believe that's what's so important about unions, because they do give you a fair uh, wage. And I believe we need to definitely have a fair minimum wage. And $15 an hour to do something.